Hi, good afternoon. This is Mr. Cassidy, and today we're going to be covering some weird problems, things that you might be seeing in this chapter, and particularly in Lesson 1-2, uh, which is multi-step equations in IM1. So let's take a look at some, uh, first a quick check, check for understanding from our last, last lesson. Um, go and solve for x, type your answer in, on this problem here. Okay, so what you should have done is first move outside in. X is here, so I want to start with things that are further away. I want to isolate my variable. So I'm going to subtract 4 on both sides. And from there, I'm going to positive 4, minus 4. Those are opposites. Because it was positive, I wrote minus 4. 18 minus 4 is 14. And now I have negative 2x. I, the thing that most people make mistakes on is they don't bring this negative down. They could just copy down the 2x. So from there, negative 2 times x means if it's negative 2 multiplied by x, that's a multiplication, I'm going to undo it by division. Negative 2 divided by negative 2. And I'm going to those cancel out. And all that's left is x equals a negative 7. Okay, that should do it. Uh, to check your answer, you should plug negative 7 where the x is and get 4 minus 2 times negative 7 equals 18. Then you can check using PEMDAS. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And subtracting a negative is the same as addition. 4 plus 14 equals 18. That checks out. Check. Okay, so uh, here are some weird problems. I want to cover these because these are usually where kids get stumped. Um, first tactic is this. If you see a fraction in front of an x, to undo that, if this is your last step and you need to undo it, this is saying negative 3 fifths of x. Well, you have two ways of doing it. You could divide by negative 3 fifths. Um, that's going to get a little tough. Uh, let, let's look at that. I would write maybe divides by negative 3 fifths. And here I would divide by negative 3 fifths. And this will work. Um, remember, keep change flip means I would change that to keep 14 over 15. Change times negative 5 over 3. Okay, and from there, I might do some canceling here. 15, 5 means 3 is here, 1 is here, and 3 times 3 is at the bottom. So I'm going to get a negative out front because positive fraction times negative fraction is a negative. 14 over 9. That would be my answer. That's the answer I'm going to get no matter what. But there is an easier way, and I think it's worth knowing. So I'm going to cover it. Uh, let me go ahead and erase all that. Here's our easier way to do this. Our easier way is since we're going to multiply, we're going to end up keep change flip and flip over this, we can also multiply it by the reciprocal. So since it's negative and I want to get rid of the negative, I want positive x, I'm going to multiply by a negative 5 over 3. And whatever I do on the left, I'm going to multiply on the right. My tactic here is to multiply by the flipped over, the reciprocal fraction that's in front of the x. Here's why I do that. Here's why this is simple. Because watch, 5 divided by 5 here, those are going to cancel out. 3 divided by 3 here, those are going to cancel out. Negative times negative, positive. Hey, everything canceled out. All that's left is just x. 1x. And now I would do that same step that we did before. Um, I might simplify, just reduce my terms so that I can make it a little easier. And I still get the same answer, negative 14 over 9. Pretty awesome, right? So to repeat, what you want to do is say you've got a fraction uh, a over b times x equals something. I don't know. Let's just put a question mark there. To remove the fraction, you can multiply by the reciprocal. Again, this should be the last step that you would be at, and you multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. Go ahead and practice that with A and B. 
Now, okay, on A, you should have flipped over the fraction and got 5 over 1 multiplied by 5 over 1. And you can't really do anything. These cancel out. You can't do any simplifying here, so we can just leave the improper answer. 4 times 5 is 20 over 9. Awesome. Uh, if you made it a mixed number, great. You would have had, uh, what, 2 and 2 ninths? That's fine as well. Okay, for B, you should have multiplied both sides by a negative 8 over 3. That's the reciprocal. Negative 8 over 3. And those cancel out. Nice and simple, right? It's sort of saving yourself a step. Here I can reduce the 2 to a 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And I would get 1 over 1. So that's just 1. So my answer is negative 4 over 3. Awesome. Easy peasy, right? That makes it nice and simple. So uh, I've got one other problem that I'd like to take a look at. And that's when you see something like this. Uh, you know, my screen's getting a bit messy. I'm going to go ahead and erase a ton of stuff here so you're not distracted by it all. Um, let me just select and delete. Gone. All right. We're going to focus on this problem now. X plus 7. I'm going to delete the rest here too. And I lost a bit of the 7. I am going to focus on this now. So here's what I'm going to do. We have to treat the top as a group. Remember, we've learned that in PEMDAS. And so I see this whole top, x plus 7, divided by 3. Now here's what a lot of students are going to want to do. They're going to want to subtract 7. Subtract 7 on both sides, and they are going to get x over 3 equals 9. And then they're going to go, okay, well, x divided by 3, that's multiplied by 3 times 3, and x is equal to 27. Yay! But then they're going to plug it back in to check their answer and get 27 plus 7 is 34. So the grouping, do the top first. 34 divided by 3, that's a weird fraction of maybe 8 and a third. And wait, that doesn't equal 16. Ah, oh, man, it doesn't equal it at all. We got to try a different tactic. And guys, there's an easy way to do problems like these. And once you know it, hopefully it sticks and you remember it. Um, let me erase a tiny bit more here. There we go. Our simple way of doing that is grouping the inside x plus 7 and handling that last. Since both of those are divided by 3, we want to work outside in. The furthest thing from the x is the 3. That's the bottom here. What operation is it? It's dividing by 3. So what's our opposite? Multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply by 3 over 1, this whole fraction. I'm going to sort of set this apart in a bracket so you can see. And Whatever I do on the left, I do on the right. 3 over 1, and I'm going to make this a whole number over 1 so it's easy to see. So why did I do that? Well, because if you just multiply by the denominator, multiplying by 3, gone. Check that out. All that's left, this is now going to be x plus 7 over 1, which is the same as x plus 7, equals 16 over 1 times 3 over 1. Let me go ahead and do 16 times 3 in my head. 48, that's 48 over 1. And those are both divided by 1, so we can actually get rid of this because those are whole numbers now. x plus 7 equals 48 minus 7. Minus 7 on both sides to do our last inverse operation, and we get x is equal to 41. And if you plug that in, I guarantee you it's going to work. So my key here is if you see a denominator and all you have left is your x on the top and a denominator here, multiply by that denominator. Remove that before you simplify or solve anything on the numerator side because those are grouped, so you're going to have to do that last. So try it out on C here. Go ahead and try it. 
okay, what you should have done is multiplied by 2 over 1, and you're going to multiply the whole fraction. And if you multiply on the left, you're going to multiply on the right by 2 over 1. That cancels out, and you end up with just 4 minus x equals 26. Easy peasy. From here, we're going to subtract the 4 on both sides because we want to work outside in. Minus 4, and we get negative x, remember to bring down the whole thing with the negative symbol, the minus x equals, um, subtracting x or opposite of x is equal to 22. Now we can multiply by a negative 1, that trick, or divide by a negative 1 if that's your preference, and we get x equals negative 22. All right, I thank your minds and your hearts. If you see this, and you will in your practice, uh, start by eliminating the denominator. Oh, here's food for thought. Let's close on this note. So D, final practice. Now this is going to be a slightly longer problem with one additional step. I'm going to make it x plus 4 over 2 plus 1 equals, I don't know, uh, I don't know, 7. What are you going to do first? What is furthest from x? You should have removed the 1 first. The rest of this problem would fall out like this. Remove the 1, we get 6. x plus 4 over 2 equals 6. Again, we're going to use that trick of multiply by the whole number, 2. And from there, x plus 4 equals 12. Subtract our 4 to get our answer. That's the opposite of addition. x is equal to 8. All right. I thank your minds and your hearts. I wish you a good afternoon. Thanks. Bye.